there, Calvary family. Welcome back to the Midweek Podcast. If this looks weird, it's because we have a guest speaker. I can look up at him. Dan Haynes, everybody. He's one of the elders in our church. He's been a very precious friend and mentor to me and to a lot of people, and he wanted to get to talk today about this most recent message. So uh, I'm going to crawl out of here and let them start talking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the fun things is, is uh, this is actually a thing that like Dan and I do. We often talk of the passage anyway and just nerd out and about just the passage about Hebrew stuff, Greek stuff and all that. And so Dan was kind of like, I'm kind of bothered because I really want to talk about this passage. I'm like, come to the podcast. You can talk about it all you want. So here he is. And I didn't invite myself to the podcast, Cass. I was just saying, I wish we'd done this during Rewind season, True. you know. <laughs> and here I are. So what do you think of the passage? What are some of the things that you really like that sticks out? I didn't know the guy's name was Kevin. <laughs> that caught me off guard. Was his last name Begging? No. No, that would have been work with me on that this. have been not as kosher. You kind of work that would with, not have yeah, been but kosher. Still work with me on this, you know, begging, you know. Listen, I can't. I don't have enough foot loose to uh, go into that situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. uh, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Tries to okay. trick me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so yes, no, not Kevin. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, no, I, I love this passage. This one, I'll share a story in a little bit. This passage has a special place in my heart because of something that happened uh, to me back around 2001. And uh, <laughs> it's just uh, to think of this guy not having gone blind, but never seeing in his life. Right. And for the first time, opening his eyes and seeing. I mean, I, I'm thinking sensory overload, neurosystem, you know, short-circuiting, you know, from everything that he's seeing all at once. And so that's one of the things I, I, I think about in this, but there's so much more to it, you know? Right. Well, and even when I was in Israel and I saw the pull of Shalom and just, you Shalom. know, Shalom. Sh- Shalom. Sh- Shalom. 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 <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is... <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. We're going to have an extended version of this <laughs> podcast. It's going to be an hour. Just me and Dan giggling half Laughing, the time. Yeah. But um, I remember seeing it in um, Israel. And I just like, yeah, just that that thought process of what it would have taken from there to there. And then to come. Uh, and then also, like you said, sensory overload. And that's like all that was in my head as I was like on the bus just thinking of this. I'm like fumbling through my Bible, just trying to like read the passage and just kind of get really that. And so... But yeah, that just that that cool visual picture of him uh, being able to see. But again, the funny thing is, is like, even though his eyes were open, I think Jesus's purpose was not just to open his eyes, but to open the eyes of the Pharisees and help them see that they've been blind. That they're blind, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I thought about when you were talking about, you, know, you said, has anybody ever been to, to Israel? And, um, and I thought about the, the pool of Siloam, the same thing. I don't remember the trek walking to it because I don't think our guide said, we are going to the Pool of Siloam. I think we just were there, you know? And we're like, what's that? And that's the Pool of Siloam. And I'm like, that looks like a livestock dip. It's a livestock right. dip. Right. You know, you run the livestock through it to, you know, to uh, get all the <laughs> ticks and everything off of them. You know, it's just this narrow, long pool. And I'm like, that's not what I envisioned at all. Right. You know? So it was, it was kind of a shocker, but I wish that I had really paid more attention now to the trek down to it and back up from it because I'm like, I don't remember where it was. I just remember seeing it and being, uh, I don't want to say unpleasantly surprised, but just surprised. That, that, that's all it is. Right. You go you to know, the for this grandiose uh, miracle. Right. He takes the, uh, you know, the small things, the, uh, what's the scripture? takes the uh, uh the foolish things to the foolish the wise. things to come the wise or things along those lines well and i mentioned it yeah it's like if you've seen the pool of bethsaida and it's like oh wow this is an amazing even just like just balmeray all oh, right it's just it's one of those like magnificent things there's lines of people to go see it just take pictures and all that but yeah pool of salam like in the story it's true there's a gardener just kind of clearing back some of the brush <laughs> there was no one there nobody there yeah. right it's so fascinating to me the pool of balmeray is not in Israel, by the way, so I'd throw that in there in case somebody's looking for it. 
It's oh. West Texas. It's in West uh, Texas. <laughs> um, but yeah, Shows that's what just, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's some of the, the, the stuff that I, that I thought about that was, was pretty cool. Um, uh, and, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the way he does it, it's, it's so surprising to me that Jesus heals how he wants to. Right. You know, I mean, I think there's another one where he actually spit in the guy's face or something. Right. You know, this one is like made in mud. And I don't know if this is uh, sacrilegious to think of, but every time I think of Jesus doing it, I always think of Simba. You know? <laughs> You heard it here, folks. I didn't make the Disney joke this time. It was Dan. Uh, um, <laughs> that's actually a very interesting reference. But, you know, it's interesting. I didn't touch on this, and I actually had a, a person talk to me after the service because twice in the text here in the ESV, Jesus anoints. The word that's used is he anoints him with mud on his face. And then when the blind man um, is talking to the neighbors he says Jesus and then he anointed my eyes and then gradually the story just kind of gets a little bit more vague right so I didn't have a chance to really talk on that much but do you have any thoughts on that uh, I've just always uh, I, I guess thought that he put you know the mud on his eyes I never thought about him you know rolling eyeballs out or anything you know I just thought you know, just kind of made some spit and spitballs and stuck it you know on his eyes kind of anointed them or something. right and uh, uh, one, of the, one of the things I did think, I think this is the first instance of a healing being done by holy water. What do you mean by holy water? <laughs> Jesus' is saliva, mm. you know? <laughs> I mean, that truly is holy water. That's a lot of holy water to make like, a lot of mud, though. <laughs> You know, and it was funny because like during the message, I was like losing my breath in like the first service. I couldn't keep saliva in my mouth, it felt like. So it was interesting to think like Jesus actually spitting. But yeah, you know, the first instance of holy water. And, um, you know, I like to think of it as I'm so glad that uh, there aren't denominations back then like there are today because we'd have, you know, the spitites over there and then the mud spitites <laughs> on the other side, you know, just kind of quarreling of what Jesus... <laughs> Sorry, Bible joke. Um, but it's interesting, like you said, yeah, he spit in one instance, and then he spit and made mud in another instance, which, like you said, Jesus Jesus does what he wants. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, it goes back to the fact that Jesus is trying to paint a bigger picture for the Pharisees, and he even ends it that way of, you know, I've, I want your eyes to be open to see. And then he also did it on Sabbath, which is another huge part of the story, too, because most things that Jesus did, I shouldn't say most things, but a lot of the miracles Jesus did was on Sabbath and it was always not to be a rebel rouser, just to kind of like, you know, stick it to the man or whatever. But like, I think also to kind of point out the fact that how far they've distanced themselves from God and in relationship with God. And so Jesus is kind of trying to open their eyes that way and say, no, 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 this is what it's about. Another thing to look at is when they asked him, who sinned, this guy or his parents? <clears throat> Jesus, it wasn't like, well, gosh, I don't know. Well, you know, well, you know, I mean, everybody sins. You know, they all did, but that's not why he was blind. Right. Jesus knows that the reason he was blinded, and, and <laughs> this gets me, Jesus allowed this guy to be born blind, to live blind for however many years till he was at least an adult, we know, and probably from the way they're talking, he's of age, you know, 40, 30, 40, you know, years old. It wasn't, it wasn't a 15 year old. So right. he lives all of this time blind because the purpose was bigger than this man's comfort. Right. And when I look at that on myself, and I think when things don't go the way I want them to go, I got to realize that. God's purpose is a lot bigger than my comfort. Right. Now, not that he's not concerned with my comfort, you know, but sometimes there's something to reach someone else uh, through our pain or through our dysfunction or through whatever we've got. He's able to use that to reach somebody else. Right. And I mean, you look at Job, that's what the, you know, kind of what Job was about, really getting, <laughs> reaching Job through Job and that. But, you know, it's like sometimes we think, well, why didn't God 
you know, make me healthy, wealthy, and wise, you know, or why didn't he do all of these, these things for me? He did it for someone so else. But it's like, he's got a different plan for you. He's got right. a different plan for me. And his plan for me is to reach somebody else that maybe Anthony can't reach or vice versa. Right. And, um, you know, it's like we get caught up in if God can make it comfortable for me, why doesn't he? Doesn't he love me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he also loves a lot of people out there that he's trying to reach and use that pain to reach other people. Well, and it's interesting because the text even says that, you know, that the works of God might be displayed in him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's already a miracle waiting to happen. Exactly. And I think that's such a cool way to think about it when you look at people is just, you know, why do awful things happen or why do... This is a classic passage that is like, why do bad things happen, right? And, you know, it's a hard question, especially when people are hurting, you know. And uh, on that subject of comfort, I've said it numerous times from the pulpit before, it's our job as Christians is not to be comfortable, but to be comforters, to come alongside and to encourage people. Another thing that I loved about this passage is you were talking, he's not asking to be healed. Not right. He's not begging and saying, son of David. He's not doing any of that. He's And there wouldn't have been nothing, nothing wrong with that. No. But he, he was content. This is my lot in life. Okay. Right. You know, and again, the song brings, it, I've got a little bit, brings so much of that out. It really puts you in this guy's um, shoes or sandals for a few minutes. <laughs> Hey, do you have a song for us? I do have a song for you. Uh, and <laughs> But I wanted to share a quick story before okay. I do. Uh, okay, because perfect. I do sometimes, this I can get somewhat emotional with this song. Y'all might too, but for a different reason. Right. You know, but uh, in about 2021, uh, I had LASIK surgery. Okay, a lot of people have LASIK surgery. It went well. I'm not, you know... But what happened was, I guess I didn't really realize how bad my eyes were, mm. you know, because I lived with them, just like this guy I lived blind, you know, he didn't know, I mean, you know, he's heard about other people seeing, but it's like, what does that mean to see, you know, I, right. not a clue, you know? And so one time when we were still living in Texas, um, my, my we were uh, we had just moved there after we got married. We were living in my, my, in my folks' home, mm-hmm. home with them for a while, and um, we had gotten ready for bed pretty much. And Brenda said, or mom says, uh, "Hey Dan, I got to go to work early in the morning. How about going to get me some gas?" And we were downstairs in the living room or something. I said, "Oh, okay. Well, let me let me go get my glasses and uh, and, and my wallet." And Brenda says, "Oh, I've I've got my wallet and I'll drive." You know, and I said, "Well, okay." So we went to get the the gasoline. We get to the pumps. And the pumps are like from me to you. Right. And the car is, you know, the other side. So I stick the deal in the, in the pump and I mean in the gas tank and I start it and I'm going, looking at the numbers, you know, trying to see them. And Brenda goes, what are you doing? And I'm saying, I'm trying to see how much, you know, where we're at. Cause she right. gave us $10 or whatever to get the gas. And I'm just getting right up. She goes, you can't see that from where you're standing. And I'm like, well, no, <laughs> she had no idea it was that bad. So when I got LASIK, I laid down and it was, you know, miracle of science, not Jesus, you know, but uh, laying his hand physically on me. But you, you lay down and you hear this click, click, click. And every time it clicks, it gets a little bit brighter, a little bit clearer every time. Hmm. And then when he finished about 10 seconds per eye, 15 seconds oh, wow. per eye. He says, sit up and read this sign. There's a little plaque, you know, right there that was red with white letters that had been a blur to me. I, mm. I don't know what it said. And it was, you know, on the wall next to me. Got up, could read it perfectly clear for the first time without glasses. And I was I was shocked. Wow. And I'd, I'd known about this song. I'd heard it for years and years. Uh, it's a Don Francisco song, and anybody that's in my rewind group knows that I love Don Francisco. And even uh, people outside my rewind group probably know that. But anyway, so I had heard this song, and I really resonated with this guy because I, I'm like, this is overwhelming for me emotionally. And Brenda, she was overwhelmed with it too just watching it happen. I was so overwhelmed with it. And yet I'm go, I could see, right. I could see a little bit. 
But this guy in John chapter 9 couldn't see and had never seen. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, what an amazing God we have, you know? And so uh, this is a, a Don Francisco song. <clears throat> now see how this, uh, how this works out. <laughs> Hard to describe what my life used to be to someone who's always been able to see. <clears throat> no, I wasn't unhappy or bitter that way, but everything's changed since I met him that day. I was down at the corner just passing the time, sitting in sunlight and feeling it shine. The sound of the crowd began to grow in my ear. So I waited and I listened as I heard him draw near. Then a man stepped up to me and he spat on the ground. He put the mud on my eyes and smeared it around. Sent me off to silo him to wash off the clay. And I opened my eyes and I looked at the day. And I have no idea how he did it. I just know what happened to me. Yesterday I was in darkness, but since I met him, I can see. When the Pharisees heard it, they put me on trial, even called in my parents and grilled them a while. When at the end I defended the man who had opened my eyes, all the trouble began. Hmm. I said ever since the beginning of time, no one's opened the eyes of someone born blind. This man sent from God, it just can't be denied. And they cursed me and grabbed me and threw me outside. And I really don't know how he found me. I just know he was talking to me. Hmm. It was easy to tell by the sound of his voice, that he was the reason I see. As soon as he spoke to me, I couldn't hide the emotion that welled up from deep down inside, combined with the dreams that he'd made to come true. To kneel there and worship was all I could do. And I call him my Lord and Messiah for everything he's done for me. Yesterday I was in darkness. But since I met him, I can see. And I call him my Lord and my Savior for everything he's done for me. Yesterday I was in darkness. But since I met him, since I met him, since I met him, I can see. Since I met him, since I met him, since I met him, I can see. I love that. I love that. And you know, that song is really cool because it like literally ties in like, we didn't mention it, but it ties in exactly kind of the point of what we were trying to say for this particular message. And you know, for me, like what you were describing with that, that that's how I felt coming to this church for the first time on a Saturday night, even though everyone thought I was homeless, right? And so, the thing that I felt was this, I have life. There is life at this church, and this is a life that I want to share. And part of this message was dealing with one of our mission statements, and that is we strive to be a life-giving church to the world. And, you know, just that whole song, and I love it. It's just that picture of life, the fact that now we see. And John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy I came that they may have life and have it abundantly and that is the whole story that's exactly what Jesus is doing he's opening the eyes of people he's helping them see but by doing that he's also given life because his life is now completely changed because now he can see sensory overload screaming colors yeah and that song was cool i've never heard that song before actually so i really enjoyed that yeah you ought to hear the real one <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know the, the other thing that i've really have liked is the vision series that you're doing is not what we want programs we want to do to in the church 
it's getting all of us to realize where we're at. It's like, yes, we want to be a life-giving church to the world. Where does that start? With my oikos. Right. With my sphere of influence, my family. If, If I'm a family of one, which I'm not, praise God, but if I'm a family of one, I've got friends around me. I've got coworkers. I've got right. people around me that I am called to reach with the gospel in however way I can. Right. You know, and that becomes my sphere of influence or my, my oikos. So I really like the, the vision series. It's not programs that we want to start, but helping every one of us to realize you're a missionary right where you sit. Exactly. You don't have to go to the mission field. It is right here in Ruidoso Amen. or wherever you happen to live. Capitan, Ruidoso Down. Right. Arizona, you know, wherever, it doesn't matter. That's your oikos, that's your sphere of influence, and that's your mission field. Well, folks, thank you for, so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening to me and uh, Dan Gab for a little bit. Um, God bless you. Find your oikos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week. If Thank you ever you. see us together in between the services, that's probably what we're talking about. Yeah, we're usually nerding out. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>